Gratitude is the attitude. Learn how by looking to Jesus with a thankful heart and acknowledging the many good things He does in our lives, we can truly live the abundant life He wants for us. Here's Pastor KK Babu of the Passion Story Church. Shall we pray? Father, thank you uh, for your word. Speak to us because your word is wonderful. When we hear your word, we are changed and we are transformed from inside. Bless us with your word in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A story is in the Bible. The story of the Israelites. Remember, as a Christian, our lives, you know, God, all throughout the Bible, there's something that is called symbolism. Symbolism is... You know, in the Old Testament, if you read uh, the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 10, verse 1, for example, it tells you that all the things that are in the Old Testament are virtually a shadow of the things that are to come. So, for example, if I'm coming here right now, my shadow is here. If my shadow comes, it tells you I'm coming. But if you go and hug my shadow, we'll start thinking you are mad. You need to hug my person. I'm the real person coming. My shadow is just giving you an alert. So that's what the Bible says, that um, the things in the Old Testament are a shadow. So one of the shadow pictures in the Bible is the fact that um, every Christian, uh, the, 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 the Israelites moving from Egypt to Canaan, signifies the life of a Christian. So you can actually, if you look at the life of how uh, God took the Egyptians, so you are in Egypt, it's like you are an unbeliever, and when God delivered you from Egypt, you, you became born again. And so from that journey all the way to Canaan is compared to your Christian group. So Canaan will eventually be heaven. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So we can do that. And so along the journey we can pick pictures of, of that. And today I want to highlight a certain story. Now the reason why I'm highlighting this story is because Jesus himself referred to this story. I like it. It's always important that when Jesus refers something in the Old Testament. He says the whole Bible is one. So when Jesus refers something, you want to um, base, um, um, check it out and see whether it's a serious thing. Now the reason why I'm referring to this story is that the famous chapter in the Bible, which we have one of the famous passages in the whole world, which is John 3.16, is based on this story. And it's a very interesting story. It's interesting in the fact that um, it has something that most of us don't like. It's got snakes in there. So we're going <laughs> to... Some of you don't like... I mean, I'm not... I, I don't like snakes either. I mean, I mean... I, I used to hate snakes very, very much. And so when I went to the US, uh, I saw children loving snakes and we had to sleep in the bush. So I had to develop love for snakes. I mean, to think that I myself, I'll be in a building that there was a snake passing through the roof and I will sleep in that building. I mean, to think about the fact that some people want to sleep in the bush... And they woke up and there were snakes in their, uh, you know, they, we use what we call sleeping bag. Ghana, we are, uh, Ghana is too hot. We can't use sleeping bag. If you use sleeping bag, you'll be, you, you, you wake up toasted. Uh huh. But, you know, <laughs> you, you, your sleeping bag is like a blanket that you can zip all through. People woke up and there were snakes in there, you know. And, and I went to sleep in the same place that, I mean, I mean, me. I mean, one time I was about to sleep. I, I the one of the children, snake, snake, snake. And I, I woke up and I saw the snake passing by the window. And I said, hey, all of you sleep. And I slept. It doesn't make sense. You know, but it was because I was in America. I think that American snakes are more friendly. When I came to Ghana, I don't like snakes again. Uh -huh. So I would have told you a certain story. But when I tell you the story, you all run away. So I won't say it. Because the story is close to. Don't, don't force me to say it. Because if I say it, uh -huh. don't force me to say it. I shouldn't say it. Uh -huh. Can I see those who want me to say it? Okay, there was a snake found in this building. Why are you asking me? <laughs> but that was many years ago. Many years ago, like three years ago, we killed a snake right here. So you asked me to say I told you I didn't want to say it. But <laughs> yeah, so that was many years ago. But I, do you want another story? Do, do, do you want to hear? Okay, I'll say that one. <laughs> You see, when you force me, you get things that you don't want. Okay, don't worry. So that's that. Um, so Jesus is, uh, God is taking these people on a journey. And um, something happened. Tomorrow, next week, we'll be examining more about the snakes. 
But before we get into the snakes, we need to know why God even sent the snakes. Now, so you all know that, do you know, some of you don't know, but whatever you, uh, I'm telling you today, that the Israelites' journey eh, that took 40 years could have just taken days, like 38 days or something, or perhaps less. Now, but God says something very unique, and we find it in Deuteronomy 8 2 that it was intentional. He took them intentionally on a longer route because he wanted them to learn some lessons in life. And so out of that, I want to tell you that some of you are here, you are going through some things and you are like, God, why are you still making me go through this thing? Yeah. God is not, a lot of us think that God is interested in our comfort. A lot of us think that God is like a waiter. So you get, waiter, two bottles of Coke, please. Then God. <laughs> some of us are thinking that God is like an ATM. So you just go punch. Pim, 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 pim. And say, you give you options. One million, fifty billion dollars. And you press. Pim. He, he. How many of us would like God to be like that? That like God is like that. God. Hey, hey, hey. Stop. Go, stop misbehaving. Bring the money. Mm. Some of you think that God is like microwave. You know, those days there was no microwave. If you have to heat food, you have to take your time. Uh, but now, pe, 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 me. Ah, hot and spicy. <laughs> but God is not interested in your comfort as much as He's interested in your character formation. Mm. And I read, time I read the Deuteronomy chapter 8, I, I, I was like, why do you take 40 years and one month? They are not even friends. Something I could have just passed here in 40 years. No, long, no wonder. The Israelites themselves were tired. The Bible says that they were tired. And so when they started being tired, um, they started to complain. They, they, they see, the very character that God wanted to come out started coming out. And it was the spirit of complaining. What were they complaining about? Their journey, they were tired. Number two, their surroundings. And two important things they were also complaining about. Food! What were they complaining about the food? The food is one way. Eh, everyday manna. Everyday manna. Everyday manna. I don't like the manner in which this manna is. <laughs> eh, eh, I don't like this manna. Everyday manna. Eh, I remember one time that we did not have food uh, when we were growing up one of the days. Uh, my auntie left us uh, without money. So we were there and we were only left with rice. So we started doing the different versions. Morning rice water, afternoon the normal rice, evening rice balls. The following morning, <laughs> different variations of rice. But I don't know how it, 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 it manna was. But I mean to think that God is cooking food for you every morning. Isn't it a wonderful concept? Uh, but they were complaining about food and they were complaining also about water. Anyway. Now, something important that I want you to understand here is that um, God wants us to become more and more like Jesus. Because when we become Jesus, like Jesus, we can take advantage of all that he has for us. In fact, the challenges you are going through today is because you are not like Jesus. God wants you to become like Jesus. When you become like Jesus, you will realize that you and God will have no challenges. If you have any challenge with God, it's because there's a lot of gap between you and Jesus Christ. And God wants you to become more and more like Jesus Christ. Hey, whether you like it or not, that's what God is doing. So God will continue to be doing things that will make you look more and more like Jesus. Ah, you better surrender. Unless, uh, 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 apart from that, then you have to stop being a Christian. Because God will do everything. The day you become more and more like Jesus, eh, you will see that you and God are one. That's why Jesus could say, I and my Father are one. See, that's why God didn't leave Jesus Christ on earth. He brought him here on earth to show you that. He didn't leave him in heaven. He brought him to earth to show him that it is possible to be on earth and be like God. And that's why we are on that journey. Hallelujah. Now, so God wants you to become more and more like Jesus and we read from uh, look at this verse in um, Colossians 3.11 it says that in this new life Christ is all that matters and he lives in all of us now 
as these people started complaining, and some of you will wonder, so in this era of democracy, can't we do a, a demonstration? If you don't like something, don't you say, hmm? Yeah, yeah. You know, go sit down. Hey, hey. Fuel prices are too high. I mean, some of us think that that's how we should be relating to God. But the kingdom of God is not a democracy. It's a kingdom. When you go to a kingdom, the king rules. It's what the king says that you obey. You don't have a right. In fact, all your rights are, the, are given to you by the king. And he can take it away. That's why when you read somebody like uh, the prophet Nathan, when he was going to talk to King David about his sin, you see, he told, told a story for he himself to judge him. But when you are in the presence of the king and you say something wrong, and the king says, Die! Don't breathe. You don't go to go. Before you say this, Jack, your head is off. Then you go and complain there. Complain to wherever. I mean, if you read the story of Haman, uh, the, the uh, king Atazexes, when Haman uh, was caught, pants down, and he started holding uh, Esther's leg. Hey, hey, you are smooching my wife. They caught him and killed him because he was making the king angry. That's a kingdom for you. So, now, the reason why we need to understand this is that a lot of us have taken democracy into Christianity. It's God that rules. His word is king. You better surrender to God. Otherwise, you see yourself getting on the other side. Now, complain. A lot of Christians ask me, is, it, is, there, is there something wrong with complaining? Now, look at the verse we are using today. Shall we read it together at the top from the message version of the Bible? One, two, go. We must be careful not to stir up discontent. Discontent destroy them. First Corinthians 10:10. 10, 10. Now, First Corinthians chapter 10 is a very interesting verse. It gives us different things we should be careful. I've, I told you the Israelites' journey throughout the desert is a picture of Christianity, and, and, and especially you should read when you go home. Try studying the chapter 10 of uh, First Corinthians chapter. Uh, it's chapter 10 of First Corinthians. You realize that it gives us some warnings that we should be careful about, that we shouldn't copy about the Israelites. And one of them here is memory. And that's all I want to talk about. And next week you see that it is this memory that brought the snakes. Memory brought them the snakes. And that's what memory, another word for memory is discontent. It is a, it's a canker that destroys Christians. And why does it come? Now, it comes because Number one, as I've written there, we fail to have a thankful heart. And you see from the key verse that we read, uh, Pastor uh, Michael let, uh, let us read that. When you fail to become thankful, the spirit of discontent arises. And that's what the Bible, you find, especially in the New Testament, you find it over and over and over. It is repeated that Christians must be thankful people. What is, what is, what is thankfulness? Thankfulness is simply recognizing that God is constantly working for your good. Constantly. It is when you are a thankful person to keep your mind frame, you will be able to see God well. Because the truth of the matter is that God means well for you. You see that, I, I, I talked about the other side of kingdom. But the good thing about kingdom is that the king, you are in the king's domain. So the king seeks to protect you. The king seeks to do everything for you. And the king has a good mind for you. Hallelujah. And one of the things that every Christian must do is to continue to be thankful. As you can see, the theme for this week and next week is look and live. Most Christians are not living. Jesus says he has come for us to what? Live the life of abundance. It's a life of abundance. It's not only abundance in money. Abundance in joy. Abundance in every aspect of our lives. But discontent, it will bring snakes into your life. Memory. And how does it come? I've told you the first one is well. Uh, it comes when you are not a thankful person. And when you are not thankful, it will come into your life. And when it comes, it will make you murmur. The second thing that... Uh, um, Discontent will do to you is that it will sap value from everything around you. 
You see that a discontent person. You see, look at if you read the verse um, in Numbers chapter 21, 47. Because of time, when you go home, go and read it yourself. The sermons I do here are really more like to stir up your appetite, to go and do your own personal study. But the the you see, I don't know whether it has happened to you or you have seen it before. When you get into a place of discontent, you start seeing things, there's no value in anything around you, and you start using words like Nothing is working in my life anymore. Are you sure of what you just said? Your heart is pumping. Is it not working? <laughs> the mouth you used to talk, is it not working? Is your voice not working? Do you know that there are some... I met a certain girl. When I met her, her voice was very thin and shrill. And I said, I said hey, wow, your voice is nice, Papa. He says, it's not nice as you think. I have been a and upon in my throat. I say, hey, Father, thank you. What, some of us have been using those words. Everything is not working for me. And you are complaining only about food. But you are saying nothing is working. Your hair is growing. This content will sap value out of everything around you. And you will never see. And that's what God constantly... In fact, discontent is eventually what led all the Israelites to die in the desert. And that's why I'm highlighting it. That you need to look at certain things in your life and live. If you don't look, we are in the year of bigger and better. But if you are not looking, discontent will come in and it will sap value from everything. And you think that nothing is working. Finally, discontent will make you feel that God is working against you instead of for you. <laughs> eh? And when you get to that place, oh, the kingdom of the enemy celebrates. Yeah! <laughs> we have gotten the guy. You know why? If you think that God is not loving and God is not working for you and God hates you and like a, a certain uh, girl told me uh, some weeks ago, she and God are on leave. She and God are on leave. They are not. But thankfully, last week, like just last week, she sent me a message that she is coming back from the leave. I said, you better do. Now, because if you leave God, where are you going? Someone said, now me and God are not fine anymore. Where are you going? You leave God. Where are you going? That's what the kingdom of the enemy celebrates. When we eventually begin to buy the lie that God does not love us and God is working against us. Eh? Eh? Look at manna, 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 manna. Every day, manna. Some of you have eaten very good food yesterday. Today, you have not eaten yet. And just because you have not eaten for a few hours, you have started complaining. Ah. I don't have any good food to eat. I see food coming your way. Amen. 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 If only you can begin to see and be a contented person. Now, God in his kindness, when he saw this attitude in the life of the Israelites, uh, I'm going to surprise all of you. God in his kindness sent the Israelites snakes. Yes. God in his what? Kindness. He sent them snakes. How does a kind God send people snakes? Sometimes the only way God can get our attention to start thinking like the way we are supposed to think is when he takes us the opposite way. I pray you don't get to a place of snakes. Amen. And you can see why. We lose focus. And that's the only way God can get our attention. Sometimes it's only when worse things happen to us that we appreciate the good things we have. Adeboye told a very interesting story. He was going to preach at 
a certain place uh, outside the country, outside Nigeria. And he was so busy about the place, you know, he didn't have time to even pray. Oh, you know, the Holy Spirit let him, oh, pray, sit down small and pray to God. Oh, I'm going to minister. I need to go and minister. So he got onto his plane and then he was on the way. Immediately the plane took off in the air as they got deep into the air where they, they would take time to land. Where, if anything happens, crash. The plane started to shake. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Some of you have not been on a plane that is. <laughs> Some years ago, me and Valeria went on a plane. <laughs> the pilot. <laughs> when we finished, we told the pilot, Pilot, why? He would drop us. Hey! How do you catch us now? I think he was getting to Kotoka. He realized that, hey, I've not come down enough. So he started just dropping us. Even babies in the, on the plane were crying. It wasn't easy. So that's what was happening. At the way the pilot said, hey, Pilot, what is happening? We don't know. Hey! So he started, Oh, Father! Oh, Father! God says, He heard the voice of God say, Ah, I miss you. I miss you. That's why I shook the plane. I miss you. Ah! I heard him say the story himself. I wouldn't have believed it. God said, I miss you. I just wanted to talk to you. I will stop the plane. Then the, the plane calmed down. Say, God, I will never forget. <laughs> These guys had forgotten that God is a good God until snakes came. We will end here for today. Next week we will continue. But I just want us to pick some lessons from it. And um, we, we go on. Now, number one, one of the things I want you to learn is that we need to be grateful to God. Even when we don't understand. Now, I like this verse in 1 Thessalonians 5.18. It says that we should always be thankful because it is the will of God for us in Christ Jesus. Gratitude is the attitude. Amen. Uh, or the process, thankfulness makes your tank full. Amen. Don't walk on empty tank. You will crash. Be a thankful person. It doesn't matter whatever you have. Somebody said, if I become thankful, what it tell me that I am settling for low things? You start from zero before you get to one. Huh? Sometimes you have to, to jump, you have to come down before. Huh? You have to go down. Appreciate where you are. Check it because before you can leap. Hmm? You want to throw a, a, a catapult, you pull it back before it can book for it. So the back is the gratitude. Look around your head. Father, thank you. And from here, you leap and you go. Hallelujah. Now, things that God does are big, but in your eyes, they are always small. Listen, you see, God is doing big things. Do you know the big things? Some of the big things that God is doing. It's so big, you can't see. So one of the things you need to do, if you want to be a person who is always looking and living, is that each time you are thanking God, anything you want to thank God about, multiply it times one million. If you want to be a person of gratitude, now, you want to thank God about your life, multiply it by one million. Say, Father, I thank you for life. Hey! It will feel like exaggeration. But because the truth of the matter is that what God is doing behind the scenes, you have no idea. You have, you will never know. Some of the things you go to heaven, they will show you the video of the things that God took you out. Me, when I'm traveling, for example, and my car has a problem, I don't complain. No. I don't know what is ahead. That same place that uh, Ebony passed, I've passed there several times. And my light is even not good. My light is not good. Some of you, there were some diseases inside of you. God cleared them. Sometimes I was there. Come and give testimony. I don't see. You are waiting. That's why some of you, because you want catastrophic testimonies. That's why you'll be crossing the road and the car will come and pop. You say, I have a testimony. (laughs) 
may you not wait for catastrophic things. Amen. Be if you want to be a person who is looking and living. Oh, you need to be someone that is consistently magnifying the small things. Let people be angry. So today I have a testimony. Then you come. Today I'm thankful to God that I'm alive. I'm thankful to God that my hair is growing. People go like, ah. You are wasting our time. Let them say that. You know what God is doing. Go and see people who are looking for hair. Go and look for people who are looking for hair. Some of you girls here are even looking to tie a ponytail. You have a pony, but has no tail. Number three. When you cannot see God's hand, when you cannot see God's hand, trust his heart. When you cannot see God's hand, trust his heart. There's a, a lady who sang a song. It's called Bobby Mason. Very powerful song. And this is the title of the song. God is too good to be unworthy. Something like that. Uh, and you don't see his hand. Trust his heart. If you can't see God's hand, trust his heart. Amen. Amen. And finally, Amen. repent and ask God to help you. If you are a person who has been ungrateful, repent. Today God is talking to you. It's an attitude that will not make you live the bigger and better life. It's an attitude that God will, God wants to remove so that you can live the bigger and better life. It's a life of gratitude and contentness. So that snakes will not come into you. You see where the snakes, next week we'll talk about where the snakes and how the snakes came. And those who were wise enough, how they were able to look and live. Today God wants you to look at your life and live the life of abundance. Jesus says, uh, the, the devil, John 10, 10 says, the devil comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I have come that you have life and not just an ordinary life, but life that is lived in abundance. The Zoe life. It's not an ordinary life. Oh. It's a life that people see you living and they are surprised. You yourself, you realize that it's a life that God himself has called you to live in a unique way. Today, I see that if only you will look, you will live. If only you will look and see all the powerful things that God is doing in your life. You will live this abundant life. It's a life marked by God's provision. Don't let the circumstances around you sap your energy. I see that as you are sitting here, many of us, God wants to take us to very, very unique places but some of us are limited by the fact that we are not able to look around our circumstances and tap into the God movement in our lives yes I know some of you are saying the devil is when people come to me say the devil is doing me my family is doing me do you know what God is doing ah your family is doing you do you know what God is doing if you can start thinking about what God is doing you will tap into God's side and you will fly and you will soar high. You will look and you will live. Close your eyes. Father, thank you for the many things you are doing. We will look and live. We will look at all the things and live. And live not just an ordinary life, but a life of abundance in you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you for listening. Christ came so we could live life more abundantly. Look to him and live. We humbly invite you to worship with us this and every Sunday at the Passion Story Church premises, Barrow Zero, at 8 a.m. For more information, please contact us on 027-7930-826. 027-7930-826. Remain inspired by Jesus' story.